focus. Okay. Hey everyone, I'm Andrew Marston, and today we have one of the best animators anywhere, Ben Marriott, here to share with us four one-line or less expressions that you can use to elevate your animations in After Effects. All right, well, here we are with the man himself, Ben Marriott. Ben, thanks for being here. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, it, for those who don't know, Ben is a motion designer extraordinaire, uh, unofficial YouTube motion design tutorial laureate, and also instructor, um, which actually, you have a course coming up, don't you? I do. I have a new course called Master Motion Design. I've been working on it for almost a year, and it's finally uh, coming out uh, by the time this is published, probably um, right now. So, I mean, I know you're here to talk about expressions, but do you mind if we just, if I ask you a few questions about the course? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Cool. I mean, so it's master motion design. Oh, I just moved my bike significantly. Okay. Um, it's called master motion design. Who is it? Who's it aimed at? Who should take this course? Okay, so this is definitely aimed at people who have been using After Effects, ideally for a little while, but they see work that, they understand and they really think that work looks awesome, but I'm not quite sure how to, you know, make that work, you know, with the After Effects, you know, but that I have. So I'm, you know, sort of peeling back all the layers of, um, you know, what makes really great motion work like um, great motion. Can you talk a little bit about the basic format of the course? Yeah, so it's going to be um, eight weeks long. It's all uh, pre-recorded lessons that will unlock every week and there will certainly be homework. There'll be assignments. I mean, Depending on what type of student you are, you don't have to do them. I'm not going to, you know, that won't be reflected on your grade. But that's where, you know, a lot of the value of the course is actually doing the work. And of course, we have a like a private community where we're giving feedback. And I will be doing, well, for the first semester, I will be doing uh, some offering some very special bonuses. I'm doing weekly live streams. So every week I'll be jumping on doing Q&A with all the students that have enrolled before October. So in September and October, if you enroll, you get all the bonuses and even better than my live streams, I have gotten three of uh, the best uh, motion design gurus and educators, I think in the world to come on and help give feedback to the students. So we have Evan Abrams, another YouTube legend, who is, you know, certainly a hero of mine, Jake Bartlett, another, you know, <laughs> legendary instructor and Emoni LaRusso who is, you know, just absolutely killing it these days, making music videos for every artist under the sun. And they're all there to give um, feedback. So if you roll on the course, do your assignments, upload them, you're going to get feedback from me and them as well. Awesome. And uh, where, where can people find the course if they're interested to sign up? Oh, definitely benmarriott.com. It'll be all over there. That's where you can get it. If you, you'll see, if you follow me on Instagram and YouTube, I'll be uh, posting all about it there as well. So you won't, you won't miss out. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you for taking that, that time to talk about your course. Um, let's just, I'm going to bring us back to the expressions that we, you actually came to talk about. Essentially, the theme of this video is more or less a, expressions for people who don't really do expressions. Is that, that, mm -hmm. is that that's about right? Um, so on a scale of zero to Sergey, Sergey being 10, um, how much of an expression person do you consider yourself? Oh, I, well, Sergey, I think is certainly an outlier. If he's a 10, I'm, I'm, I'm about a five. I think when he sees the world, he sees it as matrix code. When I see it, I think, okay, that frame, how do we specifically make that frame and make, make that, um, make that work? Um, so yeah, so these expressions they um, you know, they might be expressions you already know, but I think as a person that doesn't go into, you know, all the deep math and all the programming, this is like what I've found to, you know, get those little expressions and just brute force them to make something look, um, really cool and make it look, make it look like you spent a lot more time doing it than you actually did. Awesome. Well, so you have some expressions and examples pre-prepared, so I'm going to let you just take it away. And if I have any questions, then I'll, I'll interject, but otherwise, uh, the floor is yours. Okay. So the first expression I'm going to show you is on this little animation. So this is my match cut from, which is the, from the transition lesson in my course, where I'm going to show you how to make all of this, but I'm going to use this as an example because I think this design at the end here works really well. And I've got a layer here that's uh, frozen, so it's just uh, just static. So we're not going to see that animation. And I want to show you an effect I use to just add a, a really good boil to everything to sort of make your animation look like frame by frame. So I've got a turbulent displace effect up here. 
let me reset that so it's all wobbly. You can see all the displacement here. And the expression I love to use the most is time. So time normally it just gives you the value of, you know, I think the duration in seconds of, of your composition. But if we add that to the random seed, um, by option clicking here and just add time down the bottom, that is going to increase the random seed. So we get a new random seed every few seconds. Well, every, every few frames I see. So now it looks like a bit of a, you know, mess. This doesn't, you know, look like an attractive sword, but if you really lower down the size of the table in displace, maybe down to 20, and then the amount, maybe down to two, you get something really subtle and you can't even, you barely even notice it on a still. Actually, that's not even noticeable here. Let's turn that back up to, you know, five or 50 or something. And then it's more obvious we get a tiny little, every second this random seed is changing. So we get a kind of a new frame that looks like it's been hand drawn. Now this is pretty slow at time because that's just changing every one second, I think. So if we put asterisk and then four next to it, that, you know, um, increases the speed by four. So it's four times as fast and in a 24 frames per second comp, that's um, every six frames. So on, um, on sixes, I believe. So I use this all the time if I want to make a sort of clean, smooth, uh, you know, flat 2D motion graphics look a bit more like they're hand-drawn. So I love that expression a lot. And if anybody would like more information on this, Ben's recent video on hand-drawn animation, I think it's called, goes into much more detail. I re it's helpful when, when you don't have much time and there's not much budget to get any pencil mileage to actually do much animation. You can hold on a pretty static frame and even if it's just text or an icon, it keeps it, it keeps it a bit more entertaining for, you know, a few more seconds so the viewer doesn't have to, you know, switch off or you got to cut to another scene. I also like the, uh, the wordplay with match cut. I was proud of that and kind of embarrassed by it, but I thought, you know, what better way to show a, a transition? Okay, so the next example, I'm going to show a bit of a design from another lesson from the course. So this one is all about morphs. Similar to transitions, we'll be morphing between all of these shapes. So I'm going to show this on a still. So again, there's no animation on this one. And I've just put, well, I put one small animation, just a tiny scale up. So this next expression is probably everybody's first expression that they learn in After Effects, and that is wiggle. But I have recently learned how to use it on a particular effect to get a really cool result. So I've got an adjustment layer here, and I'm going to add the transform effect. And the transform just adds the um, basic transform properties that we're used to, rotation, scale, so you can adjust it on, a, um, on an adjustment layer. And that's really handy because it just affects everything underneath it. And then if we add the expression to position, if we add a wiggle, and then in parentheses, we're gonna put 12 comma one. So it'll, so I always remember the numbers as, you know, FA, frequency and amplitude. I remember that from the maths high school days. So 12 times a second, this is going to, um, move one pixel so it's really subtle but if we play it back there's a slight shake now if we i'm going to zoom in um, on a close-up part and you can see it a lot more there's a slight shake going on here so i love this use of wiggle because it's really subtle normally when i see wiggle it's overused it's like jello everything's shaking around and bouncing because you know when you first learn wiggle you're like yeah I'll, i can move stuff around for free without doing animation i want to make it move all over the place but um, I really like this. So it's just jittering. It's less like something bouncing around and it feels like um, film sort of going through a, a projector uh, and it sort of waves and warps as the film ages. So an older film that's been through it a lot of times that you would get the film grain and the cigarette burns and everything like that, it would shake around a little bit. And like the previous expression, it just adds a slight bit of movement to everything on screen. Even if it's just shaking slightly, every single thing is moving, you know, almost every single frame. And that just makes it, you know, a more interesting thing to look at and gives it that sort of tactility that you would get from your traditional media if you're trying to mimic film, film grain or anything like that. And yeah, I, I love this effect. Okay, so I've got this pendulum rig here and that's on two shapes here. We've got a string, which is this blue layer here, and then this diamond. Now the diamond is parented to the string and the string is just rotating from left to right but a really easy way to add a lot more motion to this is with a very handy expression. Isn't maybe technically, we don't even have to write anything down to use this expression. We wanna um, 
use the rotation of the string and apply that to the diamond. So if we open up its rotation property and we want to pick whip this to this rotation property. So the layer is parented to the string layer, but we can also parent the rotation to the string's rotation. So now it is um, sort of doubling up on that rotation. So the rotation is happening on the string and happening on the pendulum as well. And then we can uh, you know, ex exaggerate this even more. We can duplicate this diamond. I can move it to the end of this diamond, parent that second diamond to the first diamond. And now when we play it back, it's, you know, it's moving even more. So you get a bit of the wave principle here. Like this would make a perfect sort of a, a, a tail for some, you know, an animal or something like that. And it's really handy. And also another trick that you can use in a similar scenario is to open up this rotation property. And let's say um, we don't, well, actually let's remove that expression. And here we don't like the diamond, um, it's following the string, but we don't like it sort of facing the same direction. If we want to cancel that out, what we can do is do the same thing, parent the rotation to this rotation property. And then if we add um, times minus one, that will invert uh, negative integers to positive integers and the other way around. So now it cancels it out. So at the start, when our um, rotation is at minus 25, this one is plus 25. So it's canceled out and then this, um, the end of our, you know, our pendulum swinging is always um, face up. So that can be handy um, for a lot of reasons. I used it on this example in my course with the character's hair. So the head is moving and rotating, but I don't want the hair to sort of be stuck to it like it's, you know, just a triangle on the head. So um, the hair remains slightly level. Um, it moves a little bit, but um, it's parented to the, to the head, but you know, it still reacts to gravity in a, in a subtle way. Okay, so I use that expression uh, with the the earrings of this character. And even though like the earrings, they're not a big part of this animation. This animation is essentially telling one story. It's we're switching between a, um, um, a person in space to then they're zooming through warp speed. But the animation on the earrings, which I could have just kept them static, but because they're, they're reacting, it like really enforces, you know, like that impact. It sort of builds it up and makes it feel like it's actually happening um, in the real world. And again, all I did was animate one, one earring, that pendulum area, and then um, apply that expression. And you know, that drives this whole effect. So the last one is also what I used on this scene. So with this background here, where I have all of these, uh, these lanes of keyframes sort of zooming into the background, that is all one lane. So I have, um, I have a pre-comp here. If we open that up, we can see it's just, you know, a gray triangle with some uh, elements zooming into the middle. And this is a technique to sort of fill this screen up with that effect. I only want to animate this once and, you know, have that do all the work um, for me. Now, normally this is how you would approach using a repeater where if you add a repeater to a shape layer, you can rotate it a few degrees. But in this case, we're going to use an expression um, and we're going to use that on another layer. So I'm going to duplicate this layer and on the rotation property. Now I know from a uh, um, experience because I've animated this before. Um, <laughs> I need to rotate this 11.25 degrees in order to, um, <laughs> to get it line up um, with the next one. But if I wanted to fill this out, I'm going to have to duplicate this layer again and then rotate it um, well, like 22.5 degrees and just keep adding, adding 11.25 onto it. Now that's something that when I thought of like, well, I'm sure there's an expression for this. So an expression that I can use to help me with that is the expression index. So on this second layer, I'm going to, on the rotation, actually, I'm going to delete this one. So we're back to just the original, original layer. I'm going to duplicate it. And on the second one below, on the rotation, I'm going to add the property index. Now what the index property does, it just gives the value of this number here, which is the number of the layer in the layer stack. So at the moment, this is number two in the layer stack. So it is rotated two degrees. So it's just rotated two degrees. Now, if we duplicate this again, we get another one rotated three degrees and again, four, five, but that's too small. That's not the degrees we want. So what we want to do is that index um, times 11.25. So it skips one here because it is now two point times 11.25. So then we need to just add minus 11.25 and then we get it, um, you know, right next to our uh, layer here. So then all we need to do I'm going to hold my finger on control D and just hold control and hit D, 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 D. And we can fill up our whole screen with this. And it is 
super handy and in no time at all we've got the screen uh, filled up. And hopefully people can, can see these and realize that you don't have to be Sergei Proknevsky or you know like a, a, an expression guru to use expressions effectively. Um, little tricks like we've seen here are great starting points or ending points and with these tidbits of expression knowledge uh, then you know you can learn you can build on them if you want to or you can just integrate this into your already effective workflow. Definitely. I think like these are all very small little building blocks that you can achieve these effects that I've shown here, but also you can combine all of these. And I think, I mean, I'm a very a brute force animator. I like to just, well, get it done how, by any means necessary. Going, I'll go frame by frame if I have to, because normally my animations aren't very long, so that's okay. Um, but yeah, just learning these li little pieces and, you know, you don't have to learn them all at once. It could be intimidating to just, you know, slap a big, you know, what feels like a textbook from university with all this code in it. Like, just learn one little piece here and there, find how to work it in your workflow. And then you're like, okay, well now I know, you know, we probably all know Wiggle and now you can add, you know, time and index to your repertoire. So, you know, if you're in a scenario where you got lots of objects and if you could just stack them in a certain order, you know, index can uh, take care of the rest and just adding those little tools to your uh, toolbox. Over time, you're gonna have a, a big suite of knowledge. Well, Ben, thank you so much for taking time to share these exp this expression knowledge with us. Just one more time for those who are interested, where can they go sign up for this course? Uh, they can go and sign up for the course at benmarriott.com. All the information is there. They'll be able to see you know a lot more information on my Instagram and YouTube as well. But the website, that's where you go. That's where you enroll. And if you enroll before the end of September, you get access to all these limited edition bonuses. I've got the... Uh, uh, special the motion design gurus that are giving feedback weekly live stream i've got a bonus exercise and i've got a, a full project uh, breakdown of a, another project that i use in the promo of the um, course animation as well so i've been doing this you know this one is being launched independently so it's just me my wife and my chihuahua that have been working on this and it's been over a year so i'm really excited to finally get it out into the public i've put like as much as I can into this of what I really think is, you know, an ideal, you know, structured way to, um, you know, adventure skills and After Effects. So I'm excited to see. Awesome. Well, I hope everyone goes out and signs up for Ben's Master Motion Design course. And Ben, thank you so much once again. No, thank you so much for having me. I've had a lot of fun. And I'm going to stop recording. Hopefully you can see now how these seemingly simple expressions when properly applied can really bring your animations to the next level. And if you are looking to elevate your motion design game, I highly recommend that you go and check out Ben's YouTube channel as well as his master motion design course. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss a video and click the like button so that YouTube knows to promote this video to the entire internet. All right, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.